All right, all right. Happy Monday. It's 730 on this Monday, January 8th. Here we are, the second Monday of the year already. Thanks for joining us for Breakfast with Bridget. I'm your host, Bridget Ellison. Hope you had a great weekend. We had that mixed bag of weather, but, you know, indoors, outdoors, sunshine and rain. It all goes together. Meteorologist Candace Campos is here. She's been nursing a little bit of a sore throat. Not a sore throat, but just a frog, right? You have a frog. Well, I just had like that little tickle. I had a little tickle for, I don't know, like a week, (laughs) last week. And then Friday, you told me, you're like, I don't know about you. It sounds like I gave you the suit of bed. I tried best I could. You did. You did. And that did help because I had to show the Florida foodie. So that brought me back to life for a little bit. And then got you to Friday. Friday, I took a nap. I went home, took a nap, and then I woke up. No voice. At least you were off, though. I was off Saturday and Sunday. And if you ask my children and my husband, it might have been the most peaceful weekend they've had because I wasn't allowed to talk. (laughs) Oh, boy. They ate that up, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I have the some oldest. lozenges if you need to. Thank you. you. No, I do have. I have. It's not a Stanley, but it keeps my right. tea nice and warm. Yes. So. I have my new six. No, this is my other one. This is a no. This is Yeti, oh. but not sponsored. But oh, is that an art? Is that an Artemis one? This is well. It's not. It's not the Artemis you're thinking, but it's. It is oh. a Yeti though. But I'm not. I'm it not is a Yeti. You can't see it. This is, is a simply modern. Mm-hmm. All my kids have them, too. So in case you missed it and for reference here, we had that story last week about people fighting over the Stanleys and lining up super early at Target to get Stanley cups, which are like 45 bucks a pop. And we just had so much fun with that. They weren't giving them away. Now, I mean, right. They I can understand if they're giving them price. away, but they're still full price. Right. Now, I'm not complaining, though. If someone wants to give me a Stanley, I'll take it gladly. I love. I have oh, a cabinet full of cups, and I need to get rid of some of them so I can make What's room one for a Stanley. So if someone <laughs> wants to bless me, hey, I'll take it. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. I mean, but that's, today that's, it's... <laughs> and for today, you might need the Stanley cup to kind of right. keep yourself a little warm this morning. Uh, we are watching for some big changes ahead in the forecast bridge. And you were kind of talking a little Mm -hmm. bit about that, that we are going to be nice and dry today. An uneventful Monday in the weather department, which is certainly great news, but you see that system there Mm -hmm. in the corner? That's going to be the next front that we are going to be watching for development. A lot of moisture is already going to be streaming in across central Florida. It will come more in the way of cloud cover, not rain today for us here in central Florida. That will change as we head into your Tuesday. So let's look at those highs for this afternoon. Yesterday, we were in the mid 60s. Today, we're in the 70s across many spots, possibly those upper 60s across our northwestern zones. And then later on tonight, although we are still looking mostly dry, we can't rule out the chance of an isolated shower at about 30%. But the breeze is going to really be picking up in the forecast throughout the day as we will start to see the winds uh, picking up. Now, speaking of the winds, This is one of our models here that shows our potential wind gust. By this afternoon, we're still talking about a 15 to 20 mile per hour wind gust, possible. But as we head into your Tuesday, this is overnight. Normally the winds tend to die down. They're gonna start ramping up throughout the overnight. And this is before the front comes in. Look at your wind gusts. Could be clocking wind gusts upwards about 30, 35, Mm. even up to 40 mile per hour wind gusts before the front actually makes its way into central Florida. Now, what's the timing for this next front? The severe weather threat will increase about four o'clock on Tuesday for our northern zones and then traveling southward throughout the rest of the afternoon and into the evening. Bridget, you and I were talking about picking up the kids from school because that is now another factor that's being brought back in after the winter break holiday. If you're watching us from Orlando southward, for instance, your chance for severe storms won't come until later on. We're talking more like six o'clock. So the uh, dismissal time, though, for Marion County kids might be a little dicey as a severe threat will be there by about three, four o'clock. So the best thing to do to get prepared ahead of tomorrow's active weather day will be to make sure you enable your notifications, whether it's the new six pinpoint weather app or another weather app that you use, although... I would personally use the new six pinpoint weather app. I personally use it. It's a great app. It is not just computer driven. It's, it's all inputted by the team of meteorologists here. 
to make sure that you guys know all the information that you need because it is going to be an active weather day, hence why we have a weather alert day. So let me show you here the clouds and rain. Um, warm front comes through, Bridget, throughout the overnight. Little fanfare, just a lot of cloud cover. But here comes that front. That's going to be pushing through mm. by 5 o'clock in the afternoon into the evening. Come Tuesday, we will see pockets of very gusty winds. There goes that line of very strong storms pushing into the I-4 corridor. And you can see those wind barbs, those wind arrows. We're talking about really tight winds. That's going to be the main uh, weather threat in the forecast. Just because it's not a hurricane doesn't mean that we can't have winds damaging things. And by 9, 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. that threat pushes across our southern zones, and then we'll clear out and dry out really nicely come Wednesday. I do want to turn your attention to the severe weather risk because sometimes with a real big weather event, we tend to see a slight risk that level two out of five for Central Florida. And that's where most of the area will be under tomorrow. But I do want to focus your attention to Marion County. If you're going to be in and around Marion County tomorrow afternoon into the evening, please, please make sure that you're keeping your eyes to the sky as we are going to be in an enhanced risk at the level three. That's a very, very high risk for us here in Central Florida. So with that being said, obviously it's a weather alert day for Tuesday. Now, once that front clears though, we're going to calm things down cool things down as well. We're talking more than a 20 degree drop as we head into your Wednesday and Thursday in many spots. We'll go from near 80 before the front comes through down to the mid 60s come Wednesday and Thursday. So prepare yourself for a big swing in temperatures. If you don't have a sniffly nose or a scratch in your throat yet, you will <laughs> after this week as we will see that big swing in temperatures and rain all in one. Yeah, I you know, I overheard some people talking about this weather and how you just like this time of year, it's like it doesn't know what it wants to do. And then, you yeah. know, you sort of have this reaction with your whole your whole systems reacting to it, you know, right. whether it makes it, you know, it really does. It makes you feel groggy. You know, people talk about, it does. you know, arthritis and things like that flaring up. But that's that's really real. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. And then you also don't play into, into kind of factor in that when you have these huge bursts of cold air coming in from the north all the pollen that we're not used to here in central florida comes down mm. the pipe right so we're getting a lot of pollen we're getting a lot of that dry air that tends to and here in central florida if you're a true floridian you're used to just a humid atmosphere mm -hmm. no matter what time of the year so you start drying things out you bring in the pollen all of that factors in so i'm no doctor but i know just be, don't don't but be it's surprised like, you know what? it might not be flu it might not be COVID. it might not be strep it might be allergies just because of it's the way the weather stirring up everything it's yep. it's an el nino symptom mm -hmm. <laughs> from, <laughs> from all this crazy weather el so. nino allergies all right <laughs> you we're gonna start terming that bridget i think that's a good one it makes sense it makes sense all right, Candace, you keep that voice preserved. Got to get to my noon. Tea. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All righty. Well, guess who is back? Trooper Steve. Trooper Steve is back in the house. And yes, I, say, I am. You were around, though. You weren't, you weren't like across the pond or anything this time. You just I didn't relaxing. do any of my normal. Dis yeah, I didn't do any disappearing or anything. I, uh, I planned to originally take the first week off just to kind of focus and mm -hmm. get re-energized for the beginning of the year. Uh, this is going to be the first full year with Results One, so I really <laughs> wanted to get our stories going for uh, the beginning of the year and just take a break. That's, mm -hmm. I just needed a break need from it. the vacations. I. I was joking with director Terry this morning that um, when I woke up, I had to get the, the shears out and cut the roots off my body that was attached to the couch because uh, <laughs> I, I, I say was, a beard. <laughs> I, no, well, if you notice, it's the first time in probably six months, clean, clean shaved completely. And Camila was like, uh, I don't like this. I don't like this at <laughs> you all. You have like that baby. She's like, you look. Smooth. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's like, you look 12 years old. And I was like, well, I'll take 12. <laughs> so no, I was local. I was local, kept it nice and simple. I did uh, two uh, trooping days uh, with two different agencies on okay. my own, uh, just to get just to get out and about and get my my training things back up and running because I, I don't like to let those uh, slide. But no, you're right. It was local. Uh, I stayed in Lake Mary the whole time and uh, didn't go far. But I kept the tab on you guys. And you guys were pretty busy while I was I know you did because you have FOMO. 
Oh, hardcore. <laughs> I actually missed you guys last week. I was like, man, I need to get back to work. <laughs> you were you were actually watching the traffic alerts, which I need you to just stand down. <laughs> Yeah, well, only one day because it got so crazy. It got so crazy mm -hmm. that I'm like, oh, I four is closed. Oh, four twenty nine. I'm like, let me go ahead and repost this just so <laughs> people know. Hey, I'm still working at News Six kind oh, of thing. Oh boy. Oh wow. Well, good to have you back. So and I know you have. Uh, what was you that? Too. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I was just saying, how was the beginning of the year for you? Did you have a good New Year's? How's the family? I haven't oh, seen you yeah. in a while. They're, they are super. They are enjoying their last day out of school. That was like a surprise to them. Oh, it is. To the whole household. It is a teacher work day. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. So tomorrow's the big day back. So there was a little bit of a war last night about bedtime, and I had to go into my phone and, you know, shut down the tablets uh, remotely, if you know what I mean. I so. love that you've got like the supreme <laughs> power just to be like, <laughs> shut down bedtime. <laughs> I try, you know, I tried oh. the gentle route. I tried the gentle, you know, go to bed, guys. It's time for bed. And, you know, by they don't work with yours. Like, no, mm -mm, no, not happening. I, I All like, right, let's check on those roads. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right now, we still watching this mess that I swore was going to get cleaned up, Bridget. But uh, they are still out there. This is going to be northbound State Road 429, 429. Uh, in the northbound direction, north of the city of Coe, just south of West Road at the 26 mile marker. You can see traffic getting by in the left lane. I appreciate everyone going slow, but at this point they have no option out there. We are heavily backed up. We're almost about a mile and a half in the northbound direction. I've said it all morning. The silver lining is this crash is in southbound and no one was hurt. So we're, uh, we're making a little progress out there. Point Sienna, again, crash right north of the high school out there and we're backed up several miles and then if you look to the right side of your screen another crash has hap happened in the other alternate that I was going to give you off a of hand brown so either way if you're leaving Point Sienna this morning you need to add some time and then there are minor stuff out there but with it being a no school day in Orange County we're not seeing as bad of the delays you can see some minor delays westbound along 408 east and westbound in the downtown area as well Making our drive times, eh, I'd say average on a Monday, 28 minutes, Kissimmee to downtown Lake Mary, you're sitting at 20, which is a little high. So what does that tell us, Bridget? This tells us things are back to normal mm -hmm. out on I-4. The holidays are over. Westbound Lake Mary, watch out. We are severely delayed there, but out on the coast, looking great. Brevard County, Volusia County, as we slide up into Daytona Beach, Holly Hill. If you guys are headed further north this morning, you're going to be good to go. Let's check out some drive times real quick before we wrap this up. The Turnpike, about average right now, so doing pretty good. Other drive times, we're looking I-4 westbound, Lake Mary to Maitland, 10 minutes at 50 miles an hour. Nah, not horrible speed limits 55 uh, 417 and the turnpike moving as it should be and then we check out those times around central florida and we're good to go today bridget uh my stream i am super excited mm -hmm. uh you guys know i am a big representative of law enforcement here in central florida and the concerns of police survivors central florida chapter mm -hmm. is an organization who is when i say full service uh, it's hard to understand that, but it's not just when someone passes away that they, they recognize them. They basically adopt these families and they host events quarterly. And it's not just, oh, let's have breakfast. They, they, they fly these families all over to different uh, types of, you know, just family style events, whether it's uh, including therapy, uh, whether it's for the kids, whether it's for friends of law enforcement officers who have been killed in the line of duty. And they just, they don't let it go away and they don't let these families uh, be forgotten. So I've been able to MC their blue light gala for the past mm -hmm. three years. And that is in February. So I'm going to be welcoming three survivors into results one today. Uh, one being a child, one being a former spouse and another one, and all are active members of the cops foundation. So that stream is going to be taking place today at 10 AM. And it's a, it's a strong tone, but what they do, it, you just smile, uh, mm -hmm. all the time because, uh, I've been around these families both before the death and after the death, unfortunately. And it's amazing just to, if they could smile, we can smile, mm -hmm. right? So 
it, it's a good time and I'm just glad that they keep me around to uh, to lift their platform a little bit. So today that's happening at 10 o'clock. Yeah, and it's great to hear, you know, there are support units like that for people, you know, after, you know, after the story dies down, it's still people picking up the pieces of their lives and, and trying to go on. So that's great that they have that positive, you know, outlet and that support system built in through that group. Yeah, it's amazing. You would think like, okay, they just meet up, but they have, they, they'll fly up to Georgia and rent a huge property and spend a few days out there with these families. Of course, going through means and ways to deal with grief, but mm -hmm. how do we move forward while still remembering and taking care of ourselves? It's, it's such an amazing mm -hmm. organization. They have different chapters, but the Central Florida chapter I'm highly involved with, and I couldn't be more excited to welcome in Results One today. That's beautiful. Well, we'll see you, that's at 10, you said, right? Yes, ma'am. 10 a.m., clickorlando.com. All right, super. All right, well, have a wonderful morning. We'll see you a little bit later. Bye, Bridget. Thanks, Trooper Steve. We do have some breaking headlines to get to a big development in that story from over Christmas time when there was the shooting at Paddock Mall that unfortunately was deadly. That suspect had been at large until just hours ago. We just got this breaking news out of Ocala overnight. They say they arrested the suspect wanted for the shooting inside Paddock Mall. And the uh, video here is exclusive video of Albert Shell Jr. being taken into custody by Ocala police at the jail hours ago. That shooting, of course, as you may remember, two days before Christmas when the mall was packed with shoppers. A man was killed. A woman was hurt. And Ocala police have not given out specific details about where Shell was found just yet. But there had been a $20,000 reward for information leading up to his arrest. We're expecting a press conference with more information coming up um, in less than two hours at 930. We'll bring that to you on News 6 and ClickOrlando.com. I'll have that. I'll be there with you for that update at 930. A Vulcan rocket launch to tell you about, and this was breaking overnight, a historic one at that United Launch Alliance successfully sending up the new Vulcan Centaur rocket um, just after 2 a.m. James Barbero was there bright and early for the launch and explains where it's headed and why it's so special. Five, four, three, we have ignition. and liftoff of the first United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket, launching a new era in spaceflight to the moon and beyond. A maiden launch not just to orbit, ULA's new Vulcan Centaur going all the way to the moon in the next month with the first American spacecraft that would touch the lunar surface in more than 50 years. The lander from Pittsburgh company Astrobotic would become the first commercial spacecraft on the moon. We've got 20 payloads on our first mission. In an interview with me on Friday, Astrobotic CEO John Thornton called the mission the tip of the spear for returning humans to the moon. NASA hopes this uncrewed science mission that will study the moon will help its plans for the Artemis program, ULA reacting to a thrilling liftoff after several years of development and delays just absolutely amazing. I didn't expect it to be the way it was. It just my heart is still pounding. It was excellent and just I'm so proud of all the work that the team did to get where we are today. Another first with this mission, new engines powering Vulcan. Can you see excellent performance out of the BE-4s? The two BE-4 methane engines come from Jeff Bezos's space company, Blue Origin. And Astrobotics lunar lander is expected to reach the lunar surface on February 23rd. At NASA's Kennedy Space Center, I'm James Sparvero, getting results news six. All right, thank you, James. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. We're back, and we have a new installment of our schemes and ripoffs. This one coming from News Six investigator Mike Holfeld, and it is a warning for car buyers right now. If you notice something for sale with very low miles for that year may not be as good as it looks. Experts say it could be a digital rollback on the odometer and that can end up costing you thousands. This is just a programmer. That device he's holding is sold online for about $200. Legal, legitimate, 
but in the wrong hands, the odometer mileage can be changed in a second. On this device, you're just selecting manufacturer, year, model, telling it a number, and then, you know, that, that's over with. This is the odometer of a 2009 Chevy HHR truck. Watch. Once I click enter, you'll see it change nearly immediately. So like that, you've shaved off about 80,000 miles off this vehicle. According to Carfax, there are roughly 85,000 vehicles on Florida roads with a rollback odometer. 19,000 in the Orlando area alone. If you're a consumer, this is like the world's worst lottery. It costs the average consumer about $4,000 in value if they buy a car with a rollback odometer. We caught up with Carfax editor-in-chief Patrick Olson and Josh Engel, president of Atlanta Speedometer, via Zoom. Once uh, Josh changes the odometer reading on that car, that's what the car has and knows. There's no trace of it anywhere. The message, have a mechanic you trust check the vehicle. The truth is always in the wear and tear. You can take the vehicle identification number of any car you're considering, go to carfax.com slash ODO, and we will tell you for free whether we've ever flagged that vehicle for odometer rollback. Mike Holfeld, Getting Results, News 6. That is something to definitely watch out for. I came across that once um, at a car I was going to go look at, and I just decided not to even go look at it anymore. So keep an eye out for those sorts of things when you're shopping for a good deal. We all love a good deal, but not if it's going to cost you in the long run. I want to tell you about a Red Cross blood emergency. A health alert came out this morning involving the nation's blood supply. And the Red Cross has declared a nationwide emergency over what it calls a critical blood shortage. They say it's putting patients in need of transfusion at higher risk. The Red Cross says donations have reached a 20-year low and all blood types are needed, especially type O and platelets. And I know that we got a press release last week from One Blood here in Central Florida and it is National Blood Donors um, Awareness Month. So it is definitely something you want to think about. Um, I know that I need to get back in there myself and I know so many people who give regularly. So that might be something to add to your New Year's resolution if you can, if you're able to give those donations because they are so much needed for people who are in, you know, much more um, delicate health situations than us. So if you are healthy enough to do it, consider giving blood right now. All types are needed. I want to recap a big weekend out at Disney now. Maybe you know someone, maybe you were running in some of the races out there, but the marathons wrapped up on yesterday out at Disney in the men's division. Vanilla Nevez finished first, and that is, that is his second win in three years. So he's, he's got magic legs for real. And as for the women, Stephanie Muscat of Michigan won her first ever marathon. And from what I hear, it was a five minute gap between her and then whoever finished second. So way to go, Stephanie. Also a big congratulations to two of our new six team members who ran in the marathon. There she is, Special Projects producer Erica Bergulio and theme park expert Landon McReynolds of In the Loop with Landon theme park scoops right there, finishing 26.2 miles. Way to go, guys. Congrats, looking strong right there. So we're happy to see their smiling faces. Looks like they are really, really enjoying that. So way to go. Congrats again. And um, we love to see it. So if you have something you'd like to see on Breakfast with Bridget, we would love to hear from you. You can email us at bwb at wkmg.com. And we would love to try to feature that topic or have that interview on if you have something you'd like to get the word out about. But we will be back with more breakfast tomorrow morning at 730. Thank you for joining us. And I'll see you a little bit later at noon. Take care.